Hello everybody and welcome back to Writer's Block, the channel where I help you to plan, write, edit and publish your novel. My name's Joshua Bennett, author of this book right here, and today we're talking about what you as a writer can learn from The Martian. Make sure you like this video, subscribe to the channel and check out the free audiobook I'm uploading. Firstly, some disclaimers. I'm going to be referring to The Martian and I'm going to be mostly talking about the book. But in all honesty, the movie was a fairly good adaptation of the source material being the book. So if you've never read the book or you don't want to reread the book to understand the points that I'm talking about today, that's fine. You can go and rewatch the movie. You'll still be able to get a good sense of what I'm talking about. Secondly, although I will be referring to the book, I will have a few clips of the movies in this video. So if you consider that a spoiler for the movie, you have been warned. Also, I will be going into mild spoiler territories. So you are also warned against that. Now let's get into it. I was personally a big fan of both the book and the movie The Martian. And at the time of making this video, the Goodreads review score is currently 4.4 out of 5 stars, and that's with 790,000 ratings. That's pretty darn good. So, as it turns out, I'm not the only one that liked this book. Personally, I would give it 4 out of 5 stars, because I was a pretty big fan of it, but there was some things that held it back. And the good thing about this video is, regardless of whether you loved it or hated it, there are some good points that you can learn from in this book. In my opinion, The Martian did a few things right, one thing mediocre, and one thing wrong. So as this video will mostly be quite positive, I will be starting with the one negative that I've got, and that is Technobabble. I'm going to put up a dictionary description of Technobabble here. In my own words, Technobabble is when someone talks about something to do with science or technology and they use a lot of big, intelligent sounding words. But it really means nothing. They just throw around a bunch of words that people recognize but have no idea what it means to make the characters come across as intelligent. The only negative I have for this book is the amount of techno babble that goes on. I get it. The main character, Mark Watney, is super smart. He's a scientist, he's a chemist, he's a botanist, he's an engineer, and he's an astronaut. But in that moment when he's making water to drink out of rocket fuel, I'm lost. I know that he's making water out of rocket fuel, but besides that, I have no idea what's going on. Because it's all just a bunch of scientific buzzwords that really don't mean anything to me as an uneducated person in that field. I was actually going to read the passage where Mark Watney is actually turning rocket fuel into water, but it was actually very long. And I didn't want to just be sitting here reading parts of a book to you. So I'm just going to play this clip from the movie, and you'll get a feel for what I'm talking about. Every cubic meter of soil requires 40 liters of water to be farmable. So i got to make a lot more water. Good thing is, I know the recipe. You take hydrogen, you add oxygen, you burn. Now, I have hundreds of liters of unused hydrazine at the NDB. If I run the hydrazine over an iridium catalyst, It'll separate into N2 and H2. And then if I just direct the hydrogen into a small area and burn it. Luckily, in the history of humanity, nothing bad has ever happened from lighting hydrogen on fire. NASA hates fire because of the whole fire makes everybody die in space thing. So everything they sent us up here with is flame retardant with the notable exception of Martinez's personal items. I am sorry, Martinez, but if you didn't want me to go through your stuff, you shouldn't have left me for dead on a desolate planet.
So, yeah, I blew myself up. Best guess, I forgot to account for the excess oxygen that I've been exhaling when I did my calculations because I'm stupid. The point is, the author wanted you to know how damn smart and scientific and talented this guy was. Which is fine the first one or two times. It's actually great, it's interesting, and I can dig it, I'm into it. But by the tenth or more time, when he goes into some deep, complex, scientific explanation of something crazy and ridiculous, I just stopped caring. I just zoned out and I was just reading, flicking through the pages, waiting for it to end. I felt like I was just in another boring class at school. The point I'm trying to make here is think about the accessibility of your book. The way that the science was written in this book makes it feel as if it was specifically written for people with a knowledge in that department. The problem is the majority of readers are not scientists. And I understand why they did it. Because there's a saying and it goes, write for stupid people and you will write a stupid book. This means don't overly explain your book to your readers as if they can't grasp the subtle themes that you're trying to get to them. Don't treat your readers like they're stupid because they're not. But in that same vein, these overly complex scientific explanations started out fun. They started out like I was watching something on the Discovery Channel, but then it quickly turned into feeling like a science test in German that I hadn't studied for. Now, I don't like to raise problems without also offering a solution. So what would be the solution to this issue? The solution here would be to have your main character go into the deep, complex descriptions of the science that they're doing the first one or two or three times to really get across to the reader how intelligent this character is. But then, for every massive scientific thing after that, just explain it in broad strokes. Don't get into the deep nitty gritty of all of it. Just do broad strokes. We already know how smart that character is. It was a good story and Mark Watney is a great character and he's in an interesting environment on Mars. But a lot of times it felt like Morgan Freeman was reading me a dry science textbook. The voice was good, but the content was dry. That was the one negative that I had about this book. Now I'm going to touch on the one, what I would consider average point of the book. And that would be that this story is actually very, very simple. When you strip away all the pretty settings of being on Mars and being an astronaut and NASA and spaceships and all that to the bare bones of what this story really is, it's just a lone survivor story. It's just a story about a guy who's stuck somewhere and he has to use his big brain to find out how to grow some food, make some water, and then travel from point A to point B. Now, I'm not saying that as a bad thing, because like I said at the start, I actually loved this book. I just wanted to bring up and talk about the fact that this story is massively popular and it is quite simple. It's just your typical lone survivor story, but it's elevated to that next level by an interesting main character and an interesting setting of being on Mars. Now, finally, onto the good points. Firstly, where the story begins. A lot of people have no idea how to start writing their story or where to begin. A lot of people in the book industry will give you the same throwaway answer of start where the story begins. But when you have no writing experience, when you're not an author, that literally means nothing to you. The Martian starts its story in what I would consider the best place to start the story. Mark Watney gets back to the hab after a sandstorm. He's injured, he realizes everyone's left him behind and he realizes he's got no food, no water, and he's screwed. And then he just has to use his big brain to figure out how to survive. That is where the story starts. Now, this story could have easily started when Mark Watney started his astronaut training. And they could have dedicated an entire book to Mark Courtney's training and him getting closer with his crewmates and all that. But the author knew to start the story where the story starts and the story starts when Mark Watney is left behind. 
Secondly, the main character. Now, writing your main character or protagonist can often be a difficult thing to do, but Mark Watney was a fantastic main character. He was funny and he was upbeat and he took on everything that Mars threw at him. But the thing that made him so relatable was that he gave off such a fatherly, random dad vibe. He gave off the vibe of just that random dad that was always tinkering in a garage somewhere. If you want to make a likeable main character, Mark Watney would be a good one to study. The only thing to keep in mind is, as I said, the story is actually quite shallow, so Mark Watney didn't really have many character flaws. So if you were going to write him into a deeper, more complex story, you would have to give him some form of a flaw. Now, Mark Watney would be a great character to give an alcoholism problem to. He would make a great alcoholic as a flaw. Thirdly, the way the story switches perspectives. Now this is more for the book than for the movie. The story switches from the first person's perspective of Mark's log to the third person perspective of what's happening at NASA. And usually in books, to change the perspective like that can actually be quite jarring for readers. But in The Martian, it's actually done really well and it's actually done as a necessity to get across what's happening on Earth. So it makes a lot of sense in this situation to switch the perspectives. Fourthly, all the science that happens in the books. Now I'm not a chemist or a botanist or an engineer or some form of scientist or an astronaut or any other crazy profession that may have a full understanding of everything that Mark Watney was talking about in this book. But it really does show that the author must have done a lot of research to confidently write about these things. And it really does show because it really comes across as an intelligent story. And finally, the way the story ends. Obviously, spoilers, I'm going to be talking about the ending right now. The story ends with Mark Watney landing on the spaceship, getting medical attention, and then a page or two of him reflecting on everything that's happened. In my opinion, this was quite an abrupt ending. I expected them to go back to Earth, he'd meet the president, he would see his parents, and then he would give a press conference, and in that press conference would be where he reflected on everything, and then that would be the end. That was what I was expecting to happen. But the author decided to end the story when Mark Watney was safe on the spaceship and had medical attention, and you knew that he was going to survive. And in my opinion, that was the exact right place to end the story. Because like I said, the story was a very simple one. It asked the question, how do I get off this planet? And then it ended with the answer, simply on the spaceship that you came here in. And that's it. That's how the story ends. I hope you found this video informative or helpful for your writing process. That's all I've got for you today. Make sure you check out my free audiobook I'm uploading, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and as always, thank you very much.